Hello everyone, welcome back to It's a Grey Matter, Breaking News Edition. Today, we'll explore the changes and mechanisms in the enteric nervous system of a patient with an anxious disorder and a patient with a depressive disorder. We will mostly see changes in cytokines, bacteria, and neurotransmitters during these differences. Surprisingly, for all the symptomatic differences in psychology, anxiety and depression have minute differences in the gut-brain axis. So, we will only use the pink model and may use the orange and blue models at the end to model the small differences. Our primary culprit is in the brain. Is in the brain. In the brain. It involves the amygdala and the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. During anxiety disorders or stressful events, the amygdala is hyperactive, particularly in the basolateral nucleus leading to a hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis and excess cortisol. If the hyperactive stress response goes on long enough, creating chronic stress, the HPA axis can induce a depressive state and lead to depression. This hyperactive hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis likely reduces the available neurotransmitters by hindering the present bacteria. Beneficial bacteria like lactobacillus and bacteroides decrease in the gut as cortisol increases. Pathogenic bacteria such as Prevotella, Escherichia, and Clostridium increase with stress. The vagus nerve also regulates both the HPA axis and the immune response, both of which will occur beyond reason if the vagus nerve does not have enough tone or activity. Specifically, the vagus nerve has sensory receptors for information from cytokines and inhibits these cytokines macrophages, and other information by releasing acetylcholine as a signal. If it cannot send these signals by way of the vagotomy, removal of the vagus nerve, or by way of secretion of acetylcholine early in life, resulting in desensitization in later life, the vagus nerve cannot manage the HPA axis or the immune responses. In addition, vagotomy, also known as this, prevented benefits from probiotic treatment with our good old lactobacillus. But gut bacterium infections still cause emotional changes, so the vagus nerve is at least partially necessary for managing anxiety. Speaking of nerves, neurotransmitters also play a large role. The gut peptide cholecystokinin, which normally empties the gastrointestinal tract and suppresses appetite, has a large role in, you guessed it, the brain is in the brain. In the brain. With CCK2 receptors near the serotonin 3 receptors in the limbic system. CCK, on the other hand, has receptors on the sensory end of the vagus nerve that flow up to the brain. CCK2 has its largest role in the basolateral amygdala and then the hippocampus here in the temporal lobe. Generally, CCK has a positive correlation with anxiety-like behavior in both humans and rodents. Downregulation of oxytocin in the amygdala can also result in anxiety-like behaviors in rats, but it can be restored with administration of lactobacillus. GABA also has deficiencies in anxiety and depression, often related to a lack of bacteroides which is mainly responsible for the production of GABA, along with lactobacillus. Dopamine is also lacking and metabolized to functional dopamine by enterococcus. So both GABA and dopamine reductions found in anxiety and depression are traced back to the lack of necessary metabolizing bacteria. Cortisol also modulates several neurotransmitters at once. Its precursor can increase the expression of norepinephrine, epinephrine, and glutamate, and can also decrease GABA and dopamine. The release of norepinephrine alongside cortisol can draw muscularis macrophages to the site, along with inflammation correlated with the stress response to the myoteric plexus, since muscularic macrophages have noradrenergic beta-2 receptors fit for the task. Galanin also co-releases with cortisol, which regulates sleep, wake, feeding, and pain alongside mood. So, increased galanin alongside cortisol, norepinephrine, 
and CCK can it expand the dysfunction of the gut-brain axis and, in turn, influence mood. Cytokines are the last factor in anxiety disorders and the hyperactive HPA axis. When chronic stress occurs, cortisol increases, which increases cytokines that decrease the negative feedback from the hippocampus in the brain. Interleukin-1 beta and interleukin-6 increase with anxiety and depression and fall within the pro-inflammatory cytokines that we would expect to increase with stress. Ho Wing and colleagues also note that interleukin-6 decreases with lactobacillus and progesterone treatment, indicating that either treatment would fare well in treating inflammation associated with anxiety and depressive disorders. So depression and anxiety have mostly similarities in terms of the gut-brain axis with the only key difference I found being the presence of glutamate and anxiety, but not depressive disorders. I shouldn't really be surprised given that anxiety and depression have an estimated 65% comorbidity. Both Price and colleagues and Groen and colleagues suggest a bridging mechanism in which several symptoms overlap, increasing the risk of comorbidity. It's hard to say we don't see that in the gut too. So that means if we pursue treatment for the gut, it wouldn't look much different for the two conditions. We'll look at that next time on It's a Grey Matter, Breaking News Edition.